Hey, I'm Shoshana Littman. I'm a storyteller, a Magida. And uh, I have a story for you, a Jewish story called Meat and Milk. And I started telling it quite a while ago, but I had just heard it as a little parable. Actually, I'd read it. Um, it was by Martin Buber. It was just two lines long. And um, I'm sure you've heard of him, or maybe you haven't, but he wrote I and Thou, great German Jewish philosopher. May his memory be for a blessing. So I took his parable and I expanded it into a story. And then I added a couple parodies to make it uh, fun and to encourage audiences to sing along with me, which I hope you will do when we get to that point in the story. And so I had told it in a few places and, you know, it was coming along. And then I learned that my teacher's teacher, Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach, the singing rabbi of the 60s, may his memory be for learning, he already had a whole full-fledged story that he called not milk and meat or meat and milk, he called it milchik and fleishik. So even if you don't know Yiddish, you can kind of guess. You get the milchik, it sounds like milk, so that's milk food, dairy food, and then you get fleishik, which is flesh or meat, meat meals. So um, yeah, so put it all together and here we go. But I gotta make sure, so so you know about meat and milk. Now you've got the Yiddish terms milchik and fleishik. There's also another term, um, which is a neutral food. So you can't eat meat and milk together, but you can eat these neutral foods with either milk or with meat. And there's a certain word for it. Maybe you know it already, just in case you don't, parv. Mm -hmm. And that would be like grains, vegetables, fruits, and it could also be honey, um, fish, or eggs, which wouldn't satisfy a vegan. That's, you know, good food, but for parv, that's, that's what it is. It covers all those things. And you can eat parv with meat and with milk, as I said, but not together. Mm -mm, not meat and milk together. This comes from a term from the Torah, which says you shouldn't see the kid, a little goat, in its mother's milk. This is to teach us compassion. It would be better, we didn't eat meat at all, but if we're gonna eat it, then it's good that we have some hoops to jump through to make it more difficult. So we think about what we're doing and honor the, the creature whose life has been taken so that we can eat. So to increase our compassion for that which gives us food. So there you go, you've, got, you've been introduced to Jewish culinary vocabulary, in case you didn't know it, but if you did, a little review there. And now here goes the story. It's about Froma, who was an amazing cook. Now, lots of people love to cook and are really good at it, men and women. But Froma, you could give her any ingredients, she would make a feast. She was married to a fine man. He was intelligent, he was handsome, but like most people, he had qualities to work on. And the one that would give him the most growth spiritually, should he choose to focus on it, was his stubbornness. You see, he had lots of gavura, discipline and strength, but he was a little short on chesed, loving kindness. Oh. And this quality had showed up in his food choices. You see, this fellow, his name was Fievel, and Fievel, he would only eat meat. It didn't matter if his wife, Froma, could make the best blintzes, you know, blintzes of crepes stuffed with cottage cheese and cinnamon, smothered in blueberry sauce and sour cream, oh, and cheesecake to die for. Meat was all he would eat. In fact, he was known as Fleishik Fievel. Mm -hmm. Now, Froma, she had qualities to work on too. Everyone does, even you, even me. It's good to know what we've got to work on. And she knew she had lots of chesed, loving kindness. She was overflowing with it. But she was a little short on gevura, on discipline. She had trouble saying no. Do you know anyone like that? Mm -hmm. 
So she would bend over backwards to cook her husband whatever he desired. And so night after night, day after day, meat was all they would eat. Why? Well, because, and the answer comes in the form of a song. This is a parody of a song that was uh, popular in the 70s and 80s um, by, the, um, by Casey and the Sunshine Band. You'll know it, I think. Just let me sing it and then you will repeat it back. Okay, we'll do it this way, and then when it comes again, we do it a few times, you can sing it along with me. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they liked it, uh-huh, uh-huh, your turn. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they liked it, uh-huh, uh-huh, my turn. So that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they did things, uh-huh, uh-huh, your turn. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they did things, uh-huh, uh-huh. This couple, they had a lovely daughter. Her name was Malka. She was beautiful. She was smart, good cook like her mother. And when she grew up, she married a fine young man. He was handsome. He was intelligent. But he also had qualities to work on, and uh, when you know it, just like his father-in-law was that stubbornness, lots of gavura, discipline and strength, a little short on chesed, loving kindness, showed up in his food choices, but instead of meat, he would only eat, can you guess, uh-huh, milk. Didn't matter if Malka could cook the best brisket, oh, and the most succulent steak. For him, only dairy would do. In fact, he was known as Milchik Mendel. Mm -hmm. But here's the catch in a traditional Jewish home. Can you eat milk and meat at the same time, same meal? Of course not. I've already explained. No. But this family, they loved each other. They wanted to eat together. So what did they do? Well, they did some social distancing, just like we've been doing. They know how to do it. You just, you put, uh, you, you prepare the meat meal in one side of the kitchen and the mother and father-in-law ate it in one room. And then the son and daughter-in-law prepared their milk meal on the other side of the kitchen and ate it in a different room. It wasn't perfect, but they managed. Why? Well, because, here we go. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they liked it, uh-huh, uh-huh, so that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they did things, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, eventually, this family became poor. These things happen. And they couldn't afford to eat meat or milk. All they could afford to eat were the vegetables from their garden. Fortunate for them, Malka and Fruma were not only excellent cooks, they were also gifted gardeners. Mm -hmm. They could grow and prepare the most amazing asparagus, the best broccoli, and of course, perfect potato kugel. It's a pudding. You could make it with noodles too. But here's the thing. Because they were used to eating separately, they continued to do so. Even though all the food was parved, it was neutral. They could have been eating together, but they did not. Why? Well, because. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they liked it, uh-huh, uh-huh. So that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, they did things, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now. Who's to say what finally caused the light to go on or the door to open? I don't know. Maybe it's happened to you. You're, you're walking along doing things the same old way day after day and suddenly you go, wow, there's, there's a whole new world out there and in here. I could change. And so you do. And they did. I don't know. Maybe Malka sat down with Frumma or Mendel with Fievel. But suddenly they realized, oh, look at this, all the food, it's parv. We could eat together. And so they did. And the food, oh, 
never so delicious. And the conversations, never so deep. And the singing and the blessings, oy, never so holy. And they wondered, why? Why didn't we do this before? Well, here's the answer. It comes from a much older song than the one we did before. This one was written in 1930, composed by Jimmy Hugh, and the lyrics are by Dorothy Fields. It's the sunny side of the street. Now, this is a parody. We're not going to the sunny side of the street. We are going to the parv side of the street. And toward the latter half of the song, which usually sings, you sing I and me and my, we're going to say we and our and us, which is a paradigm shift that I think our whole species has got to go through. And God willing, we're going through it now. Oh, may it be so. Here we go. Sing along, please, or just hum, whatever you like. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the pub side of the street. Can't you hear that pitter pat? And that happy tune is your step. Mm. Life can be so sweet on the far side of the street. We used to walk in the shade oh, with our blues on parade. Oh, now we're not afraid. Us rovers across and over. If we never had a cent, we'd be rich as Rockefeller. Gold dust at our feet on the pub side of the street. Gold dust at our feet on the pub side of the street. Ah, uh, yeah.